Hey everybody, welcome back. So now that the old CJ7 is running and ready for some off-road adventures, I decided I needed a radio in it. Now this vehicle had a CB radio in it many, many moons ago, but it's been long gone, and my off-roading friends tell me that CB is pretty much dead and everybody's gone to GMRS. So I had to decide, do I want a mobile, you know, mounted in the vehicle, or do I want a handheld? And the proper answer is both. But I thought I'd start with a handheld. And I watched a bunch of reviews, decided what I liked, what I didn't like. And I have both a ham license and a GMRS license. And I got several handheld ham radios. But I wanted a GMRS radio just for the sake of being legal. And um, after watching all those reviews, I decided on the TID radio H8 in this beautiful zombie green. We're going to talk about why I chose this one, how it works. And you can tell me why I made the complete wrong decision and how I'm an idiot and I shouldn't even be allowed to talk about radios at all. Let's get on with it. So, when you open the box, you will find a manual, 52 pages long, with a bare minimum of Chinglish and pictures and diagrams on a scale of 1 to 10, with a 1 being the worst Baofeng manual from 10, 12 years ago you ever saw, and the best being a Motorola or a Midland manual, I would give this one probably a 7 or an 8. It's actually pretty good. And it's all English. There is no other languages in it, which I appreciate. And it's not a fold-out. It's a book, which I also do like. You will find a charger and a cable, a wall wart type of thing. You'll find a charging stand, which actually holds it pretty securely. You will find two antennas, the short rubber duck and the longer one. Longer, you know whippy one that you can put your eye out with. You will find a 2500 milliamp hour battery. You will find, which I have already installed, a belt clip which screws onto the back of the radio with screws and a tool. I don't know what I did with the tool, probably threw it away with a tool in it. And you will find a wrist strap which I have also already installed. And you will find the TID Radio H8. This is the second generation model and this is the GMRS version. And we'll talk more about the GMRS versus the ham version in a, here in a little bit. And that's what you get inside the box. The battery connects quite securely. It slides in. It slides in. Let me see if I can get this on camera. It slides in like that. Then you press it down. And then there's a locking tab that you snap up like that. And as I'm sure you've already noticed, this is the zombie green version, which I really like because... I'm sick of all black stuff that turns invisible on me and I leave it behind. So, even if you drop this on the trail and get back in your vehicle, you ought to see this before you run over it. When you plug the charging stand in, you get a green light. You'll notice that there are some, I don't know if you can see it, but there are some like little wings in here. And then slots back here in the battery itself that hold it securely. When you slide it down, the... Um, the charging light turns red. Another thing worth noting is when you plug the charger directly into the battery and don't use the charging station, there is a charge light on the battery itself. And yes, it does not have to be connected to the radio to charge the battery. You can do it outside. With, you can do it with the battery completely disconnected from the radio. Taking a look at the front of the radio, you have the screen. You have the VFO or frequency and memory setting on it. You have the Bluetooth button, and we'll talk more about the Bluetooth functionality in the app in a bit. You have a button that switches between A and B frequency. This can monitor two frequencies at once. You have a menu button. You have an up and down button, an exit button, and then you have the standard one through zero and pound sign keypad. On this side, you have the push to talk button, and then you have two programmable side buttons. On this side, you have the flap that you can put in the um, external microphone, or you can put in the um, a standard Baofeng Kenwood type of programming cable. On the top, you have the power button, you have the flashlight, and you have the alarm button. So one thing that's pretty cool about this radio is you can switch it between GMRS, ham, and fully unlocked mode. And you can do that with a couple of key presses and you power the radio on. So with the radio off, if I hold down the star button, 
hold down the push to talk button and it is kind of awkward and turn it on it'll say initial ham sis data will be eraser yes or not so we get a little bit of chinglish here if i do this it will wipe out my gmrs frequencies put in the ham frequencies that it comes preset to and i won't be able to transmit on the gmrs channels but i will be able to transmit on the ham channels i don't want to do that i've already tried this i know it works so i'm going to say exit for not i'm going to turn it off i'm going to hold down the zero press push to talk and switch it on and again it is kind of awkward and now it's going to initial gmrs sys which means it'll take out the ham frequencies that it comes preset to put in the gmrs frequency channels it's preset to and you will not be able to broadcast on the the ham channels you'll be able to listen to them but you can't broadcast you can't transmit sorry i know that freaks some of you out i'm going to say exit for not i'm going to turn it off i'm going to hold down the pound button this time the push to talk and once again i am going to awkwardly reach up and turn it on and i didn't get it right let me try it again press to talk pound and turn it on and now it says initial unlock sys and that means it unlocks everything now you can broadcast on bloody anything you want probably including the NOAA, ch the NOAA channels, which you don't want to do. And I'm going to say not because I don't want to wipe it out and have to put it back. Something worthy of note, this is the GMRS version of this radio. And they do make a ham version of this. This particular model is legal to transmit with on the GMRS channels. And it cannot transmit on anything else. But I have been told by reliable sources... That it, um, if you lock this radio into ham mode, it can then legally transmit on the ham bands and it will be then be locked out of GMRS channels. And I have tested that it does get locked out when you change it. Also, I have been told that when you, when this radio is locked into GMRS mode, it is a five watt radio, but when it is locked into ham mode or completely unlocked, it is then a, a 10 watt radio take all this with a grain of salt i haven't been able to confirm it but i have heard it from two reliable sources okay when you first power this radio up and excuse me i'm tipping it to try and keep the reflections off it when you first power it up you'll see the welcome screen then up here you see the transmit power reading and when you press the push to talk button a red bar will go across showing you your transmit power this little icon here will show you your receive signal strength and there will be like little bars like on your phone then h is for high power w is for wide band here is the frequency but this is gmrs and we're really not that much worried about frequencies we care more about channels this down here tells you what memory storage spot that you're currently using and gmrs1 is in the number one memory channel spot and this area down here shows us the two frequencies, GMRS1 and the NOAA number two weather channel that we're monitoring. And this little green diamond or triangle, it shows us which one is the main that we'd be transmitting on. This is the battery power icon or battery strength icon. And this, of course, down here tells us if we're using any tones or codes on this channel. This being a GMRS, GMRS radio, it already comes with all the GMRS channels pre-programmed. You'll see we're on number one. We're on high power and wide band. If I move up, we stay on two, three. You'll see the frequency change. And on number eight, we show low power and narrow band. That's because eight through 14 are shared with FRS, which are limited to narrow band, and I think two watts of output power. Once we get back up to 15, we go back to high and wide, and we stay on high and wide all the way up to 22. Then on 23, we go to repeater channel one. And this is already programmed for all the repeater channels. Everything is in you need, no tones or codes are set. This radio will work right out of the box. And that's the first, when we get the repeater channel 8, you'll see we're on memory channel, memory channel 30, repeater channel 8. And if I go up one more, 
I will switch to NOAA 1. Now my signal strength popped in because I received NOAA 1 really well here. Everything between memory channel 31 and 188 is yours to use to program in channels that you can listen to or duplicates or duplicates that have tones or codes, things like that, but you can do with them as you please. Pressing the menu button will bring our menu up and there are like 46 or 47 menu items. I'm not going to go through what they all are. We'll run them through here real quick and if you want to slow it down and look at them, you can. I probably only know what like 35 of them actually do. And I may be wrong about some of those. So I'm not going to try and explain what I don't really know what is. And the manual only, only covers up to 41, but if you go to their website, it shows what the rest of them are. And obviously, if you've ever had a radio before, you'll probably recognize what they are without a problem. If I haven't already mentioned it, this radio is Chirp compatible. I'm using an 8-year-old cable I got for my Baofengs, and I've had no issues with it whatsoever. The TID radio programming app also works on my Windows 11 computer. Haven't had any issues with it either. But let's take a look at the Bluetooth functionality because that's one of the main selling points for me. So we're going to turn the radio on. We're going to press the Bluetooth button right here. It says BL. And then you'll notice a little Bluetooth icon appears there. Now the app you're going to want to get is called OD Master. It's in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And I'm going to start it up. You'll notice when you start it, one of the first things it does, it asks you to create an account. You do not have to create an account. If all you want to do is program the radio and set the, save the channels and set the menu options, you do not create an account. You do get all the social aspects of it and some other things if you do create an account. I did because I wanted to play with that, but honestly, you might not even be interested. Uh, once you decide to skip or create an account, either skip or log in, I'm going to go ahead and log in. I'm going to select model a radio. It's a TID Radio H8. It's an H8 GMRS. Now I'm going to tap Connect Bluetooth. And now I need to tap this little button over here. I think this calls it Kit 9000. No, Kit 9600. I think it's incremented it. Anyway... Now we're going to type read, and you'll see it, and I've had no issues with this at all. It starts reading the channels and the menu settings off the radio, and you'll see that um, it really is pretty quick. It's at 50% already, and I'm not speeding this up. It's not quite as fast as Chirp, but also it isn't that much slower either. So it is read from the radio, and now we can see all the channels. We can change channel up here to whatever we want. And we can make any changes we want. We can see all the menu settings here. We can change anything we want here. We can reset the radio. We can save all these settings. We can set scan lists and things like that. And we can write back to the radio. Just for sport and amusement, let's do a quick speaker test and see what it sounds like. I'm sure most of you will recognize what this is. This is a Baofeng radio, a UV5R. I have both these radios set to NOAA one so i get a very good signal on noah one let's listen to the baofeng sunday partly sunny in the morning then becoming sunny highs in the lower to mid 60s sunday night mostly clear let's listen to the tid radio to 46 christmas day mostly sunny highs in the lower to mid 60s monday night let's go back to the baofeng Let's turn them all the way up. That's max. Tuesday night, clear. Let's go back to the TID radio. Wednesday, partly sunny. That's max. Highs in the 60s. So there you have it. There's a speaker test between the two. Personally, to my ears, the TID radio sounds better, but they are both completely usable. Well, there you have it. That's my unboxing and initial impression of the TID Radio H8 GMRS version in beautiful zombie green. I really wanted to do a transmit, you know, test, but living down in the valley the way I do with mountains all around and without a friend with a, another GMRS radio nearby and without, you know, a, a repeater that I can access that covers the area I'm in, I really can't do it until I get out on the trail. 
I did send one of these as a gift to a family member, but unfortunately he's far enough away that that's really not going to do me any good either. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody using my affiliate links. I'll put an affiliate link below to Amazon for this radio. And if you're watching this anytime near where it comes out during Christmas, there may even be the Christmas sale still going on at tidradio.com. Anyway, thanks a bunch and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.